Hey, GED students. So I had two different students message me on Facebook. So if you want to message me on Facebook, it's uh, www.facebook.com slash light and salt learning. But they messaged me on Facebook and they both had problems from the same worksheet, same lesson, same level, same worksheet. And so I thought I'd tackle them together. So first one we're looking at here on the left example is from Maria and the one on the right is from Angel and both of them were working on the advanced level of solving two and three step equations. So if you don't know, uh, when you're on the crash course, the advanced level is the most challenging things you might see on either the GED or as you prepare for your college algebra classes. So they're tricky, all right? And these problems I'm going to tackle actually don't have necessarily one right way to go, but I'm going to use the methods that were taught in this video. So if you know another way to do it, that's cool. As long as you get to the same answer, that's good. So let's go ahead and look at the first example. Negative 5 times the quantity of 4m minus 3 is equal to negative 25. Notice I said negative 5 times the quantity. See how the negative 5 is shoved up against that parentheses? That negative 5 is multiplying times the whole grouping. And most students go wrong right off the bat. They do one of two things. Uh, let's get out a red pen so we can take note of the wrong thing. The first thing that most students do is they want to get rid of this minus 3, knowing that when we solve, we usually... Uh, take away what's adding or subtracting first. And I would agree with you, except that negative three is inside of a grouping. See how it's in the parentheses? That means it's doing two things. Yes, it's subtracting with 4m, but it's also part of this group that's getting multiplied by negative five. You cannot take this sucker away by plain old simple addition because it's doing two things, just adding is not going to take it away. So that would not be a wise first move. So if that's not it, you know, what's the other thing students do? Well, a lot of students see, well, okay, this grouping is trapped by this negative five. I better get rid of this negative five. Now, I agree with you there, but where students will go wrong is then they'll go, well, it's a minus five five, I'll add five. And again, I would ask you, what is this negative five doing? Uh, if you try to add five, you're not going to get rid of it because you're not thinking about what it's actually doing. So look at it closely. Look how this negative five is shoved up against this grouping here. If you want to get rid of that negative five to free up that grouping, which is what we do want to do, you're going to have to know that that negative five there is a multiplier. It's shoved up against that group. It's multiplying that group. And so we are going to get rid of it through the opposite of multiplication. We are going to divide away that negative five. And once again, if you know another way to deal with it, that's fine too. Okay. Um, now, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So let me come along to the other side and divide by negative 5 as well. Now, here's another place where students get stuck. They just look over here at this left-hand side. They go, it is so messy. I don't know how to both multiply and divide by negative 5. And I want you to remember what your goal was. Your goal was to get this negative 5 to go away. So multiplying the grouping by negative 5 and dividing the entire grouping by negative 5 are opposites. So they're going to cancel. It's going to go away. There is nothing over there. And you have now untrapped that grouping. There's nothing left that it's multiplying with. So it's just 4m minus 3. You don't even need the parentheses anymore. And then, of course, that's going to be equivalent to what I get on the other side. And if you struggle with negatives, be sure to type this into your calculator because negative errors are the most common types of errors on the GED. But negative 25 divided by negative 5 would give me positive 5. And now I bet that you've once you've seen it get free of these this grouping, of this multiplication, this looks a lot easier. Now this is just a simple little two-step equation to solve. And again, we work the order of operations backwards as we solve. So I will move this minus three now. Now that it's untrapped from a grouping, it can totally move with simple addition. And let's see what happens. Subtracting three and adding three is zero out. And so I am left on the left-hand side with just 4m. And on the right-hand side, five plus three is eight. 
I'm almost done. M is almost alone, but this four is multiplying with it. So to get rid of multiplication, I divide. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And I get M is equal to two. So glad you sent in this problem, Maria. I think it would mess with a lot of students. Okay, now let's look at Angel's problem. Again, a scary looking fraction in this case, uh, a third power looks gross. Okay, so once again, remember when we're solving, I'll just, I should have written it down last time, but we'll write it down now. We work the order of operations backwards, meaning that any groups are gonna have to come last. Now, this is one of the reasons I'm so anal retentive about teaching pandas instead of JAMA, guys, because parentheses aren't the only kind of grouping. Fractions, naturally group. You have a top group, the numerator, and a bottom group, the denominator on a fraction. And so this X group right here, this grouping, uh, it's we're going to deal with it last. We have to take anything away that's outside of the grouping first. So I'm going to take away the dividing by three, the uh, group that X has nothing to do with, okay? Divide by three. So that being said, uh, how can I move division? Well, I do the opposite. I, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by three. Now, be nice and neat for me. Use parentheses around the entire left-hand side because we're multiplying the entire grouping, not just one number. And then make sure that three lines up with the top so you can clearly see that cancellation of a three on the top and a three on the bottom. Now, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Now, watch how I write the three here. Don't be that student who accidentally writes it up there and cubes the right-hand side. You're not cubing, you're not raising it to the third power. You are multiplying both sides by three. So with these nice whole numbers, you just put it side by side. There you go. And now let's see what our new equation will be after making that change. Again, remember, multiplying and dividing by the same number cancel. And once again, look at that grouping, untrapped x cubed minus four. And then on the right-hand side, that's gonna be equal to what we get when we multiply 20 times three. You can do it in your calculator, but we get 60. Wonderful. Now that the grouping is untra untrapped, um, we can go ahead and follow the order of operations backwards again. So we'll move anything adding or subtracting first. So I see that minus 4, so I will add 4 to both sides. Opposite of subtract is add. And let's see what our new equation will be. Subtracting 4 and adding 4, 0 out. All I have left is an x cubed or x to the third power and 60 plus 4 is 64. Now this is where a lot of students would be stuck. They wouldn't know what to do from here. Some would just stop right here. Kate, it's solved. I'm done. Uh, no, guys, you're not done until x is alone. I don't know what x is equal to. I know what x cubed is equal to. My goal is to figure out what x, x alone, is equal to. So that means I have to undo a cube. And this is where students you know, fall down because they're not sure what the opposite of cube is. So I'll just remind you about inverses. You know, the opposite of add is subtract. Yes, the opposite of multiply is divide. Those are the inverses we're used to. Now, a lot of you guys know the, the opposite of the second power. The opposite of the second power, also called squaring, is square root. Okay, similarly, you can actually take the opposite of any exponent by using its root. So the opposite of the third power is the third root. We also call it the cube root, okay? So if I want to get rid of a cube, a third power, I need to use a cube root, a root with an index of three. So here's how I'm going to write this. Give me that little check mark house like you do with square root, but then tuck a little three in the check mark. Okay, that's going to cancel out my third power. Now I can do whatever I want. I always have been able to with equations as long as I do it to both of the expressions here. So I'm going to jump across the equal sign and don't forget to tuck the little three in that check mark or you're going to get a wrong answer. Okay, I'm not taking the square root of 64. Uh, that doesn't get rid of cubes. <laughs> I'm taking the cube root of 64. And let's see what happens. Cube and cube root cancel, leaving me with x, yay. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the heck? How do I take the cube root of 64? Well, if you know your perfect cubes, it's going to be easy because what cube root means is what number cubed, let me write this down somewhere, what number cubed 
would give me 64. So if you have your perfect cubes memorized, you'd go, oh, hey, four cubed would give me 64. So the cube root of 64 must be four. But what if you don't have them memorized? Well, don't worry. You, when you solve equations on the GED, you get your calculator. But the problem is this one's a little tricky for most students to type in the calculator. So in these little help videos, I can't show you my calculator, but let me just bust out the key sequence that you would, could use to do this. So if you wanted to do this, the first thing you would type is you would type the green second button up at the top. Reason why I need to do that is because to get the cube root, fourth root, fifth root, we need to use the x root key, which is in green. So it looks like this. It looks like x the root. Oh, I forgot a key. I was about to screw you guys up. Oh, man. Okay. Back up, back up. Press clear. I'm so sorry. Kate was about to flake out. Okay, let's try it again. I forgot when you're using x the root, you have to type in the index, this number in the check mark first. So sorry about that. Back up, type the index, that's three for uh, cube root. Then you're gonna do the second green button to get the x th root, careful, not the regular square root, the x th root. Eh, it looks kind of like the x is floating and it should x through. So if you see that one, that one's right above oh, the caret button. So you'll be pressing the caret button. And then you press 64 and enter. And it should confirm for you that the cube root of 64 is indeed 4. All right. No wonder Maria and Angel sent me these uh, equations, they're really, really tricky. Now, if this, if you're not at this level of solving two and three step equations, I need you to just not even worry about it. Remember that it is not a big deal if you're not uh, able to tackle the advanced level practice of anything on the crash course. Feel free to do whatever level you're at. Uh, everything is GED geared, so everybody's making progress regardless of level. But that being said, if you are college bound, if you are looking for that high score on the GED, um, tackling the advanced levels is, is a really good way to raise your skills to those higher levels. All right, if you wanna practice this, go hit up the crash course. On the lesson page, so this is in the algebra unit, that's unit one, solving uh, equate uh, two-step equations, I think it's called, solving two-step equations. This is the advanced level practice. You can practice these two problems and lots of other tricky ones like it and build up those muscles like Maria and Angel are doing. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, please do drop it in the comments. Your comments are how I decide what videos to make. And then I just want to take a quick second to thank you, uh, say thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon and supports me on uh, by buying me cups of coffee, on buy me a coffee. You guys are a real blessing. You are how I do what I do, how I'm able to do this. And um, I do prioritize the questions that I get uh, from my supporters. So um you could get to the front of the question queue if you want to support me. All right. Uh, happy learning, you guys.